The cone container has a radius of three feet at the top and a height of eight feet. Can you see this picture? Radius of three feet, height of eight feet. That's bigger than many of you. Mo everybody here, sorry. I should say everybody. No one's eight feet tall, unless you're a freak. <clears throat> I'm not even eight feet tall. All right. If water flows into the container of the con at a constant rate of five cubic feet per minute, how fast is the water level rising when the height of the water is six feet? So are you okay? This right here is the water level. Are you okay for this situation? Isn't there one? Aren't they wondering when the height is six, don't they want to know at what rate the height is increasing is the question here. They do know this. They do know this information. All right. Do you also understand that three and the eight will never change? For the cone itself, it will never get bigger or smaller. The cone is set, but the water level is changing. And that's what we're looking at, the water level. Now, if you look at this question carefully, do you notice R is never talked about? Nowhere in the problem besides the original radius it's ever mentioned. So we're going to do something to this equation to get rid of R. Because if you think about it, isn't the question asking for the rate of the height? So my question, the whole problem is asking for dH dt. That is what it's asking for. And the units will be in feet per minute. So this is our goal. Our goal is to find the rate of height. So I want to change this equation right here to only have h's. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Because right now with three variables, with a v, r, and h, it gets overly confusing and it's hard to solve. It's easier to get it down to simply h's. We'll get to that. Let's list all the information we have. All right, we have five cubic feet per minute. Now, is that, isn't that a cubic, isn't that volume? Isn't that a rate of a volume? So are you okay, hopefully, that dv dt is equal to five cubic feet per minute? Now, is that a negative five or a positive five? Well, is the water level going up or down? Is it filling or leaking? And if you read carefully, isn't it filling? So won't that be a positive five feet, cubic feet per minute? So I listed this information. What other information do we know besides the size of the cone? Well, don't we also know, we want to know at six feet, what is H? So do we also know that H equals six feet? For this particular problem, we want to know these, this is what we know. And we want to plug it in and somehow find DH, DT. That is our goal. How do we do that? Well, we have to do this formula, but again, we have to get rid of R, so watch how that works. What you have to realize, for this particular cone, you have to realize there is a large triangle in the cone, which is 3 by 8, and that is similar to a small inside triangle for the height, which is H and R. Can you see this triangle right here, the 8 by 3, and the little one, H by R? Can you see they are similar because they share two angles? Thus, they're similar. Thus, they're proportional. So there is a proportion we can do for this one. And the proportion I'm going to write for this particular problem is going to be 3 to 8 is equal to R to H. You could have also done it 3 to R is 8 to H. It doesn't matter. They both will get to the same spot. And I'm going to solve this for R. You'll see why in a second here. But I'm going to solve this for R, so I'm going to cross multiply. When I cross multiply, that will give you 3H is equal to 8R. And then I'm going to divide by 8. So what I have is R is equal to, oops, let me go back, 3H over 8. So I know that is now R. Can I take this R and replace that right there and make a new equation for this particular cone. And that's the equation we're going to use, this newly created equation. So here we go. My new volume equation is going to be 1 over 3. I'm just going to put pi. Is it okay? I don't need the 1 on top. I'll put the pi on top. R squared times H. And isn't R going to be 3h over 8. I now have a new volume formula. 
If you simplify that, what you're going to end up with is, let me see, that'd be three, three pi h cubed is basically what you end up with over one. Now, you might be like, how'd I get that? Well, won't, isn't this going to be a three squared and an eight squared? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I take that back. I messed up. Over 64. I take that back. Let me show you how I got that. Isn't 3h squared, 3h over 8 squared going to give you 9h squared over 8, over 64? Won't they give you 9h squared over 64? So I want the 64 to go to the bottom. But won't 9 over 3 reduce? Won't 9 over 3 leave you a 3? Won't 9 over 3 leave you a 3? The pi stays. And won't h squared times h give you cubed? So I cleaned it up. Now can you take a derivative in respects to time? All of that was just to give you an equation that you can now take a derivative of in respects to time called a related rate, plug in some numbers, and solve for a missing value. So here we go. dv dt is the, the rate of change um, of volume over time. All right. We're going to keep the 3 pi over 64. Are you okay with that? You're going to have a 3h squared. That's the derivative of h to the third. And you have dh dt. Think about that. Won't this just be a constant? Isn't this all a constant in front? Isn't this going to be 3h squared? And the derivative of h in respect to time is dh dt. There is my piece. Can I now go plug in my values and solve for dh dt? This one's a little tricky. So I can plug in my 5 for dv dt. All right. My 3 times 3 is going to be 9 pi. Okay. My h, my h is 6 squared all over 64 times dh dt. All right. Then what you do next is... Could I multiply both sides by 64 over 9 pi times 6 squared? And won't that cancel with that and that cancel with that? we got to do it to both sides. Now, don't I know that dh dt is equal to 5 times 64 over 9 times pi times 6 squared? And if I clean that up, I ended up with 80 over 81 pi. And my units is going to be feet per minute. There is my answer, which I can rewrite over here where I wanted it, I guess, in the beginning. And that is my answer for the rate at which the height is changing. So when this is six feet high, the height is changing at this rate per minute, as long as the volume of water is being flowed in at a constant rate of this amount per minute. But that only works for six feet because it would change. Wouldn't the height be changing differently when it gets closer to the top? Can you tell? Think about this kind of situation. When it's at the bottom, isn't the height going to change a lot faster than when it's at the top with the cone shape? If you think logically, it will, it will increase a lot slower the higher it gets, the lower it's, it's kind of like an hourglass. Think of this as an, like a part of an hourglass, but it's being filled.